Okay, so you're in the market for a premium ultra fine finishing sander and you've got it down to a short list of two. The Merca Dios or the Festool RTS 400 REQ. The question is, which one do you go for? Well, let's take a closer look at both of them so I can help you make a little bit more of an informed choice. Well, hello again and welcome back to my channel. Now, let's get a bit of housekeeping out of the way before we start to take a closer look. This certainly is not an unboxing and first impressions video because this has been in my possession for over two years and this has been with me for just over nine months. This one, the RTS, is my own, purchased and bought with my own money. And this has very kindly been loaned to me from Merca. Uh, I didn't run out of the shop with it. Yes, they did send it to me. Um, for the purposes of review. So I'm not sponsored or affiliated to them by any way. However, uh, if you are interested in either of these products, I do have affiliated links in the description. So if you choose to buy it through those links, then a small commission might go to the channel. Okay, let me give a little bit more clarity what I meant by saying these are ultra fine finishing sanders because this is just simply my definition of things and not necessarily what is reflected in the trade. Well, I have three levels of sanders in my opinion. The first one is kind of the geared eccentric sander, so the likes of the Festool Rotex and the similar models by like Metabo and Makita and Triton, and they are for heavy duty, quick stock removal. The second level I would class as a fine finishing sander and that's the equivalent of the likes of the Festool ETS EC 150 that comes in a three or five mil orbit or the Mercaderos. Now they have the capability or the capacity if you push them to do the heavy duty stock removal but they're also suitable for fine finishing as well. But these here the RTS 400 and the Dios, these are ultra fine finishing sanders. Okay, they are not random orbit, they are an orbit sander. In the Dios case, it's three mil, and in the RTS case, it's two mil. So this is not for heavy duty stop removal, this is simply for a fine finish. And in regards to that, I've come up with a list of categories that prospective buyers might be interested in, in regards to the features available on both of these sanders. And at some point that should be scrolling up here now, and I'll also leave it in the description. So if there's something specific you wanna look at, then you can cut straight to that part. And I think really we should look at part one, which is the overview of both of them. Okay, if we start with the sanding pad, then they are the same size, coming in just over 130 millimeters by 80 millimeters. So they take the standard size disc, which is 130 millimeters by 81 millimeters. And that's where the similarities end. If we look at the Festool first, from front to back, it comes in at 150 millimeters and it is the same in height. So from the base of the pad up to the top of the handle is also 150 millimeters. Whereas the Mercadios has a much lower profile. It is longer from front to back at approximately 220 millimeters and the height is 100 millimeters from the base of the pad to where the paddle is depressed. The Festool comes in a heavier one, just over 1.2 kilos, whereas the Merca comes in at just on one kilo. With the Festool, the handle has the traditional uh, start-stop button on the front, and the adjustment of the revs is on the left-hand side at the back of the, back of the handle, and that takes you from 6,000 to 12,000 RPM. Whereas the Merca Dios has a main switch at the back, and a plus and minus to take it from 5,000 to 10,000 RPM. And it is controlled by the flappy paddle, which you can depress to get the full revs, but you can also ease off in your hand to lower the speed of the sander, should you wish. In regards to the power adapter, Festool owners will recognize this as the standard adapter, which can be used across the range with the dust port underneath. And Merca have a three point power adapter, which pushes in at the back of the sander. And there's a little kind of plastic button underneath, which you need to depress when taking the adapter out and the dust holes again underneath where the power socket is. Okay, let's kick off with horizontal sanding because I think for most prospective purchasers, this will be its primary purpose. And let's not mess around here. These are both top of the tree products 
from top of the tree companies and you are paying a premium price and expecting high quality and high performance. And I can attest to both, they are both a delight to use for horizontal sanding. Let's look at the Fest tool first. If you hold it in what you might class as the traditional position with the start stop button facing forward and your hand is kind of gripped to the side with your thumb on the inside. But what I've actually found is if you turn it more sideways and put your hand in the middle there, it relaxes your wrist and your hand a lot more and I've found that a lot easier to use it that way, even though it might not be conceived as the actual primary way to use it. The Mercat, I've found three ways to use it has been fine. The traditional way, shall we say, will be to put the paddle in the center of the palm of your hand and depress and your fingers go around the front. I've actually found that if you spin it round and depress it with your fingers facing towards the start stop button, that's equally as um, comfortable, shall we say. But one I actually probably use it for most is to put my third and fourth finger in what would be like the trigger position, my index finger to come around the side and to use my thumb to depress onto the paddle. That's what I've found probably the most comfortable. Again, it's relaxing in the wrist and relaxing in the muscles in your hand. And you can use these for long periods of time without having to worry about any kind of fatigue in your forearm or in your hand or in your shoulder. Well, I suppose this section fundamentally boils down to how much vertical sanding are you planning on doing? Now, for some woodworkers, that will be virtually none because it's all in the horizontal position on top of your workbench. However, if you are sanding walls, prepping them ready for painting, or you're sanding a door down, or you're sanding a skirting board, then you might be doing quite a bit of sanding in this position. And again, there is a distinct difference between the two. Now, in my humble opinion, this one, the Dios, is far better at vertical sanding than this one, the RTS, for two reasons, and please allow me to explain. Firstly, that extra weight, it's over 200 grams heavier, and you don't notice it, obviously, when you're resting it on top of a sanding surface, but when you have to hold it in that position, you feel it, and you feel it quite quickly as well. Now, I've noticed there's a bit of a sweet spot. If you turn it to approximately 45 degrees, it takes a little bit of pressure off, but if you turn it more that way, you will relatively quickly feel it in your shoulder, or if you have it in the upright position, you will feel it quickly in your forearm. Now, obviously, you can use two hands to take that pressure off your arm, but that isn't an option for myself. But with the Dios, immediately as you pick it up, you feel that it's lighter. And with your hand being closer to the surface, it just feels more planted and easier to use. I know it's subjective, I know it's an opinion, but I have used these now, as I've explained, this one for two years, this one for nine months, and I would certainly not consider using that in a vertical sanding at all if I've got the use of this one. Hope that's some, some help. Let's go on to the next bit. Okay, I think it's really important to address the issue of vibration here because in my previous Festival Merca comparison video, it was one of the most asked questions in the comments section. And there is a difference between the two. Now, when you are paying absolute top dollar for your sander and you are with both of these, then it can often be the finest of margins that can separate the two. So here we go. And this is going to upset Festival owners. The Merca is better anti-vibration in the handle than the Festool is. 
and I have spent hours deliberating on this. It's not until you put the two next to each other that you can feel the difference. And let me explain what the difference is. The vibration on the Festool is not necessarily coming up from the pad, it's actually coming from where the adapter goes in. So if you're an RTS owner, do this experiment. Get it started up and then move your hand to the adapter and then back to the handle. So when you move it there, you can feel a distinct vibration and that feeds into the handle itself. So where you'd actually expect it to be coming up from is not a problem at all. The vibration's coming from here and feeding into the handle and over a period of time, yes, you can feel it in your hand. And there is no such problem with the Merca. There is no vibration in the handle at all very, very minimal and less than what you'd actually get from the Festool. It's nothing to do with the dust extractions, it's nothing to do with the ports going in, I've switched them all around for all different types, it's purely to do with the machine itself. Now whether that helps you in your final choice or what you're thinking about, then it's definitely something worth considering. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about dust collection and I'm sat down for this bit because to be honest, in a workshop environment like this, I can't do an experiment for you because it'll have no scientific basis whatsoever. And we have to remember that the most important part of dust collection are the tiny microns that we can't even see as opposed to the large particles that remain lying on your workbench. What I can do though, is I can talk a little bit about my experiences between the two. But it's also important to remember that the tool itself is only one of a three-part component for efficient dust collection. The other being the type of sanding disc that you use and also your dust extractor. I will say though, between the two, there's nothing really to pick between the two of them. And just to say that they are both excellent at dust collection. All right. Uh, I have noticed though with the Fest tool that you feel a little bit more of a vacuum power coming through the actual tool itself. And it's almost like a suction onto the actual surface that you don't get with the Merca. So maybe that gives it a slight edge. I haven't really noticed any discernible difference between dust collection between the two, apart from the fact that they're both excellent. So in terms of extras, what additional equipment do you actually get when you purchase these sanders? Well, they both come in a sustainer case, minimum expectation at this price point, and they also come with a three-year warranty. The Merkers is a two plus one year, so you need to register your details for that extra year's warranty. But make sure you do that, because in my discussions with Merker last year, less than 10% of private purchasers actually registered for that final year. Just get online and do it. In regards to the Festool, this model is the RTS 400 REQ+. And in terms of extras, you kind of get this plastic bumper thing that goes around the pad to help protect the pad. And also you get a dust bag. And it did come with some Festool uh, sanding disc as well, and obviously the power lead. Now with this being the demo model, I haven't got all the extras that come with it. From a quick uh, Google search, it does come with a hose and it comes with some Abranet discs. I'm not sure it comes with a pad saver, but if neither of them do, make sure you go and get one of them for the sake of 15, 20 quid to protect your pad. It's well worth the money. So that's it for extras really. So I think the next thing to do is just have a little bit of a sit down, a reflection on where we're at, and I'll give you my final thoughts. Right, so where are we at in terms of final thoughts and conclusions? Now, before I get to that, I purposefully have avoided the topic of price in terms of figures, because in my original Merca Festool comparison video, the Deros against the ETS EC, I got into discussions in the comments section and prices fluctuate around the globe. So in some parts of the world, Merca is cheaper than Festool, and in other parts of the world, Festool is cheaper than Merca. All I will say is you're paying at a premium, so you're paying right at the top end for your orbital sander. Okay, so where are we at then? Now, I've even brought the ETS into this discussion as well. These are both excellent sanders, okay? So if you purchase one or the other, you are going to be happy with them. And it all boils down to personal preference. Now, the thing I found really strange about the power tool world is 
when you go to purchase one of these or you're thinking about purchasing one of these, you might not even get the chance to hold it in your hand before you buy it and you're 90% certain that you're not going to get the chance to try it before you buy it. So what do you do? You end up on YouTube with listening to mugs like me, uh, giving you advice on which one you should or you shouldn't go for. Now I put a post out on Instagram saying has anybody got either one of these and what's the thoughts on it and there are lots of fans of the RTS, all right. Uh, my YouTube friend Peter Millard uh, confessed to having three of these um, and I think he actually said in one of his videos that this is his favourite sander. So again, it's the personal opinion. Where am I at? This one. Okay, now I've worked with I've worked with these two for the last nine months and this has become my go-to sander. It's not just become my go-to sander between these two, it's actually become my go-to sander between all three of these. Now, why is that? I just prefer using it. <laughs> That's the reality of the situation. I do like the lightness. It is lighter than these two. It's definitely, you know, from direct comparison between these, it is lighter. It feels more comfortable in my hand when I use it. There is slightly less vibration, which means using it for longer periods of time means your, your hand, your forearm doesn't get tired. Uh, and in the, it's the variety of the situations that I use it in as well. When I've done my video for painting uh, the OSB wall, what did I sand the OSB down with? I sanded it with this. I didn't even go for the ETS, okay, because I just felt more comfortable. It felt easier uh, and more relaxing using it. I know the flappy paddle can be a little bit of a contentious issue. Uh, I've grown to like it. I had no issues with it with the Deros, to be honest, but um, I found situations where I use it and I actually use it for easing off on the power. Now, if you're um, sanding something like uh, sheet goods like MDF or ply, then obviously you want the kind of speed to be at a constant so it'd be fully depressed. But if you're sanding actual timber, which has got knots in it, say you're sanding a piece of oak, then is it nice to actually ease off on the power and then when you get to the knot that you wanna maybe depress the power and make it a little bit more powerful? Or if you're doing a wood and resin work and you want to ease off between finishing on the resin and then going onto the wood, then changing the speed without having to go and look for the switch or go for the plus and the minus. Yeah, I've been doing that and I've been doing it more frequently the more I've got used to actually using the paddle. So it's one of those opinionated things, like everything I suppose is in the power, power tool world and woodworking. And I'm expecting a lot of people to come back and say the RTS is the best sand that they've ever owned. And for them, it will be. Where am I at overall? I'm going to be selling this to fund a purchase for one of these. I can't sell this because I still need something for kind of the more aggressive style of stock removal. And things like a Rotex or those geared sanders are two-handed machines and I just simply can't do that. But I do like using this, you know, I go back to it. They're all great sanders and it boils down to the finest of fine margins, which becomes personal preference, shall we say. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Just uh, towards the end, folks, I am working with uh, new video equipment and I'm also working uh, with a new microphone. So apologize if the audio's not been of the greatest quality. I'm still getting to grips with it. I've got a little bit of extra footage at the end. Uh, what was really interesting when this first arrived is I put the video, uh, put the camera on the background and we were putting the cladding up on the front and Pam's dad came to help me that day. And I showed him the two and he's, he's a maker. He, he's great in what he does. He makes loads of little outdoor things like uh, uh, windmills and uh, stuff, for, but, you know, gifts for people really. And I just put these two in his hand and said, which one do you prefer for the feel? So don't just take my word for it. Have a listen to Dave at the end as well. Maybe the odd outtake or two, because it's taken, uh, taken quite a bit of time to fill this one, uh, film this one, sorry. So as ever, everyone, uh, take care, look after yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Models, but Without obviously trying, and we've tried them later. I'll, I'll tell you what, for the feel, that one, for the feel, mm. that's a bit heavy. That's what I have here is the REQ Plus, and that comes with a, don't know, 